Hey guys, welcome back to According To. I'm Megan. And I'm Sierra. For this week's episode, Megan and I are just gonna yap it out about <laughs> whatever thoughts we have. We kind of have like a, at least I made kind of a we running list talking points. of no things that have been going idea, on, though. whatever. Recent events, whatever we want to talk about. Um, it'll be fun. It'll be fun anyways. Before we get started for this, Megan goes, we have a podcast, like we just need to talk. That's all we do. Yeah. So... Here's to hoping we can do that for 45 minutes to an hour. (laughs) Um, First, we'd like to start off with our weekly spotlights. So if you have a weekly spotlight, I shall let you go first. My weekly spotlight is our inaugural movie night that we did in our basement. So basement is essentially done. Um, There's a couple like, not necessarily even like cosmetic things, but we have this whole ordeal with the speaker projector. Yeah. Or projector speaker that we could go into. But basically... My spotlight is that we had people over. We had Haley, Ashton, they brought Henry, we had our dad over, and we watched the Because our basement's train. small enough, we decided, we realized we're like, we need to do two separate movie nights with the people. We're like, we need you to come over. Our basement's done, so we need to do a movie night. We thought initially of doing like one, one movie night, but it was like, okay, realistically, our couch can only fit so many people. We do have a table and chairs down there, um, so some people were sitting on those, but like, If we would have had more people, it um, wouldn't have been as good. And I will say, I was kind of nervous about, like, the table and chairs situation. I I was like, is that going to be, like, comfortable for someone to, like, hang out down here for a whole movie? But, like, I was basically at the table the entire time, and I thought it was fine. I was corralling Vegas, like, half the movie, because he was, like, just very interested in Henry. And Henry was very interested in Vegas as well. Um, But I was just, like, he's a dog, so I was trying to, like, make sure he wasn't getting too rough with the baby and um he just wanted to play a little bit so i was like oh my god calm down but it was still fine (laughs) um my weekly spotlight is booking a new york trip which we will talk about later on in the episode um because i always like having something to look forward to a trip especially if there's one thing that megan is constantly doing it is looking specifically at flights for the next trip to be booked I just, I just need something like that to, you know. And you know what? I'm glad that I have you bit. in my life to force you to force that. Because like, that. I'd probably do it, but I don't think I would do it as much <laughs> as you do. Um, okay. Let's circle back to that whole fiasco with the projector and the audio stuff. Because so, that was actually insane. Initially, and also by the way, final basement episode is coming this weekend as this episode goes live on thursday it'll be up sometime this weekend so get excited for that and then finally like in our vlogs and stuff we don't have to hide the basement anymore um so we had initially gotten this bluetooth to speaker connection so like yeah our so the projector has like um an aux cable as like the audio output so if you're not wanting something to come out of the projector it needs to have like an aux cable and so I found online an aux to Bluetooth adapter thing that you just plug right into the projector. And then I found a Bluetooth enabled projector. And so I was like, perfect. Then we don't have to worry about any cords. That'll be great. It and it worked work initially. There is a small lag with the audio. So and honestly, like noticeable enough that at least to me, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to like deal with this but we were kind of dealing with it a little bit and we thought that that's what we would do in the meantime however prior to the movie night that we were planning on having people over for the audio kept cutting in and out on the speaker and like we couldn't get it to just like fully work so we were like okay this isn't gonna work so we're gonna need to figure out like a direct wiring situation and the issue lies in the fact that there are so many different um possible options and in my mind I was kind of thinking oh if I can just get like these two things to plug in together one thing to another in theory it'll work that's not the case it you can't just say I'm going from this to this and it'll work out fine um because the like the projector basically only had one option which was the aux output thing okay um the bluetooth speaker had if not the bluetooth it had an hdmi thing on it and an optical cable thing and I know nothing about optical cables. So I was like, HDMI. okay, we're going to use the HDMI. So then I went down this rabbit hole of kind of like, okay, I need to figure out how to get from this aux cable to an HDMI. I was, you know, 
online looking through stuff for a long time because then I was like, I don't remember exactly what I was looking at, but obviously like the more I was looking at, I was like, oh, this is like a little more complicated than I was anticipating. And also I was trying to figure out not only did I need, you know, to get from point A to point B, I had like 12 feet of wiring that I needed to span the ceiling to get it as far as I wanted. And I needed stuff close by so I could hopefully buy stuff in stores. And a lot of cords I was seeing just like six foot options. And then I was like, okay, well then how do I extend that cord? Like I was just running into multiple issues trying to figure out how to make this work. Eventually I end up thinking that I found the solution and I was going to, I found like a long aux cable and then there's a million and one different converters. There's a converter I found that I was like, okay, to get it from, I couldn't find a converter from like an aux cord to HDMI. But I did find RCA are like those red and yellow and white plug-in things. I found that to HDMI. And then I also found an adapter from an aux cord to an RCA cable. So in my mind, I was like, perfect. Okay, this is kind of a lot, but I think this will work. So I got the things I needed. I got the adapter. They were all like close by. And I was like, okay, time to go home. Test it out. Get this all working. We go home. I'm plugging things in. Everything, you know, things are connected. Like we have a cord from the projector to the speaker in theory. And then I'm like, okay, here we go. We go to turn it on. No audio. And I was like, what's going on? So then trying to figure stuff out again. I see, and I sh- should have probably realized this before, but like the box that I got, of course you can get two different versions of the box with different inputs and outputs. You can't, it can't go both ways. So the input that I had, um, should have been the, been the output. And I was like, okay, I got the wrong one. Went back to Walmart, got the different one, brought it back. I thought, okay, Problem solution solved. is... Plug it in. We've got it. Nothing. Nothing happens again. And then I'm like, okay, so clearly, like, this isn't working. This isn't a valid option. What is going on? And then I was trying to figure out... That's called an HDMI arc, if anyone cares. <laughs> that's what I was trying to do. And come to realize that that's not a feasible option if the projector does not also have the audio it with like an hdmi thing so like okay that's not gonna work then because our projector doesn't have that so then that only leaves the optical cable which i was like okay i've never really dealt with an dealt with this cable. so like how do i get from an aux cord to an optical cable there is a an adapter for that a little box thing so i ended up finding that of course it's not anywhere in stores near me but it was on amazon and so i got that delivered literally behold, showed up like one to two hours before a movie night lo and behold we plugged things in, got it set up, and it worked. And also, Thank like, God. what was hysterical is, you know, our dad, Haley Nash, and they all came over. We were telling them about this whole ordeal. Our cords are literally, like, taped up on the ceiling, like, during the movie night because we had we to don't get them have up out of the way. Up. Um, we work on it. So we still need to do that. But we're telling them this whole ordeal. And Haley goes, well, Ashton could have told you that. And I was like, how am I to know he would know that? You guys don't have a projector. Right. I still don't know. And I'm also like, and also I don't consider myself to be dumb, but like I've never, I never had to, I don't deal with speakers or anything like that a whole lot. So in my mind, I was thinking, connect point A to point B, something will work. And eventually, you know, that held out to be true, but I just didn't know which one to get to. And all these different converters were new to me. And um, it was just like more confusing than I was anticipating it being. You know what Haley did last night? We can also like talk about our weekend in general, but we were with Haley last night. And I was talking about our yard because it's springtime and my yard is annoying me yet again. Um, we just have so many dandelions growing. And then Megan and I get annoyed and say, like, we don't believe in yard care. Like, I literally, it doesn't work. I put fertilizer down. I put the you know weed what? killer down. Megan and I, we, I think we literally talked about this already last summer, last spring, when people, literal, like, passersby have seen us in our yard on our hands and knees pulling out dandelions. And they've been like, you could just spray, spray it. it. Oh my God. If I hear think, one more person what do you tell think me I to did do that. the first time this year, because I was like, I'm sick and tired. I don't want to pick dandelions the entire time. So guess what I did? I went around and sprayed them. They're still, They're still sitting here. in the yard. They still seem to be growing some more. They're we thriving. fertilized. We fertilized. We put, we also spread like the anti dandelion weed stuff. What do you think is happening? Anyway, Nothing. so um, we we're just talking about yard stuff and how annoyed we are with it like you know how there's things that like people like don't believe in like very commonly like believable things like it could be like medicine related whatever for me it's yard it's yard care i literally am like at the point where i'm like i am throwing money away doing what i'm supposed to be doing and and for what 
I do my spreader. I do the crabgrass stuff. I still have crabgrass. I still have dandelions. My yard sucks. So <laughs> it could be worse, but like it certainly isn't good. Anyway, um, so we're talking about that. And then I get on topic of I've noticed like Vegas likes when we go on walks, he'll like see dandelions and like the version of the dandelion with like all the, the seeds white and one. stuff. He like specifically will like, try and go and eat those. He doesn't really care about the yellow dandelions. And so I'm like saying that. And then <laughs> Haley goes, I think she was talking about like this, like thinking it was in our yard. And mm-hmm. it's not really like in our yard that he does that because I haven't seen too many of the like seeding dandelions. I don't know what that version of them is called. But dandelions. I know, but like when they're in seed form, like to spread. And so like Haley, I don't know what she said word for word, but she was like, oh, like don't let him eat the like white one because that's like the seeds will spread and then i was like i'm aware of how dandelions work this is not in my yard but i just like i got the impression that she was like oh like those the white ones like spread the seeds so like don't let him eat those and i was like i know that those are the dandelions that spread seeds i just thought it was funny and that's all i have to rant about yard work stuff we did a whole episode about yard work and then Haley goes oh like if you pay ashton at first she goes you pay him 10 bucks i was like I'll pay come him 30. On, come on over. Like, and I'm like, does this include mowing my yard? Does this yeah. include getting it back in shape? She just kind of threw out a random number. But and then she was like, okay, it'd probably be more than $10. And I was like, okay. But I, Ashton, if you're listening, he doesn't listen to this. I'm going to talk to you because you can come and do my yard. I have no desire to. That would take it out of my hands. So eventually I, I should just, get a quote for like a yard care company yeah. to be like, fix my yard please we've done it for two summers and it's manageable it's fine but like I just it doesn't it look like, great yeah it doesn't look awful but and i can only i can only get myself to put in so much effort i literally took vegas on a walk and i took a picture of someone's yard because i was like wow that looks amazing i okay. can only hope do we want to transition to talking about taylor swift's new album let's and i want to do like a full weekend recap and then we can and jump, then we can jump into, into pop into, culture and yeah pop culture and other and all stuff. That stuff um we didn't do anything on friday did we no we never do anything on friday fridays was like i'm just making it through and usually like for better or worse like one of us has to edit a video too usually or yeah. like finish it up so like it's kind of nice to get it down on fridays so that comes saturday when we wake up it's not like on our to-do list so usually like i edited that vlog we had a whole week in our life love love, love editing those <laughs> um they just take so long to they edit. do and i didn't I had started editing it um, the day before, at least, so I had some of it done, but still, takes a while. Anyway, so Saturday, we try and do, like, at least, like, one outing or so, like, every weekend. But the this horrible weekend thing, was cold again. And the last weekend, thing, it was, like, literally a summer tease. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, we do our, my morning ritual, you know, I deal with Vegas from, like, deal six to <laughs> whatever, you know, take him on his walk, do all that stuff. Um... Men gets up leisurely around nine o'clock or whatever time you got up and we kind of hang out for a while and eventually we're like okay what are we doing today because saturdays we try and leave like pretty open as like you know that's our fun day and then sundays are you know our reset our life podcast day. whatever day so unfortunately and you guys if you have like any ideas please let please me let me know like what you do just on Random now that's like no idea. hopefully we're not gonna have like that cold of a weekend again i hope it gets warmer but like it really was quite cold actually um and like literally all we can think to do when we don't know what to do or where to go is i guess we'll go to the mall yeah like which if is we fine. want to get out of the house like that's the only place i can think of to go just to like because you can go and like walk and around there's no expectation you don't have to buy anything if you don't want to like there's you know little to no barrier of entry for that um there's like no events that i could think of to like go to Mm -hmm. so first we started outing by saying well let's go get like a sweet treat so we went to crumble got four cookies two peanut butter chocolate one regular chocolate and then we got one oreo birthday cake the oreo birthday cake was pretty good yeah very very sweet but if you like um oreo balls it kind of tasted like that because i think they mixed cream cheese into the frosting so it's very good. good um and then we're sitting at crumble and we're like well where are two that are also I just the listening mall. to because we will get to taylor swift's new album as much as i love taylor's album like we were in the benson boone mood so we were listening to his album a couple songs we also um convinced Haley to listen to that album because she has she had not listened to him before really although she did end up realizing she knew some of his songs 
but now she is listening to that nonstop as well. I just feel really proud when I make a suggestion and people end up liking it. So. We had a listener that said that they started listening after we like recommended him oh. on the podcast, and so they wanted to know. I had already responded to them because they were like, what is your favorite song on the album? And I said, we actually covered it in the episode if you haven't listened yet. So, But I'm just happy to be listen, spreading like, the word. And, you know, he's growing in popularity like crazy so i'm not saying i'm like he's like a niche artist like this that underground like, indie this underground artist. indie artist like he's literally got like him. 50 million listeners so but still he has some all his all his songs on the album are a bop so um anyway Saturday, so then we did go to the mall then we did go to the mall because that was the only thing we could think of even though we sat in my car for like 20 minutes trying to think of something like else to anything do. else please anything there was nothing and then we're like okay um ended up being a good trip we went to madewell and i got some jeans and this is like a newish store to our mall like and there's no other madewells that i know of maybe in iowa um but they got they got some cute stuff it's expensive but they're cute so um i tried on and got their wide leg full length i think they might have like vintage in the name or something it's like a blue denim with these like front pockets on both sides of like the hip and i thought they were fun we're trying to figure out like good summer shoes yeah please because, help i mean i've got now that i have my new balances like i'm always a sneaker person so like i'll wear them any season so like i've got my sneakers that i like and i do like sneakers with shoes with shorts like what did I'll, you say you said with shoes with jeans with shorts <laughs> i'll wear them with whatever but i also need some sandal options that are not just birkenstocks also my birkenstocks are like they're getting so worn out, except for like one pair that I have. Um, but we need comfortable too. They need, like, com- they need to be comfortable. I w- am open to needing like a black pair and then like a tan or brown pair just to like have both my bases covered. They need to be slide on preferably without any other hassle of like being able to stay on my feet. And also they need to be something that I could wear dressed up or down preferably um, because I tend to be... Like, I don't want to get a million and one shoes. And I want something that would work with if I'm wanting to wear something more casual. Maybe, like, it probably needs to be more casual than dressy. But, like, if it could bend back and forth, I would love that. Yeah, we were, like, we were at the mall looking at different shoes and whatnot. And I just couldn't really find anything that was what I was looking for. We saw the most interesting shoe. Do you remember what brand it was? Uh, No. But it was... It was almost like a reverse heel it was where imagine like a sandal that's like got this flat. strap over your toes, kind of like a slip on sandal and then flat bottom, like completely touching the ground. But then there's like a little heel. Like cut, just like a almost. little platform. Like if you were to like be in a dressing room and you have like a platform you stand on when you're trying on an outfit, it was like that, but for the heel of your shoe and just like on that an island. That was an interesting way to word that. <laughs> It's like your heel is on an island on the shoe. But like the heel doesn't connect to, like there's no slope. It's just flat, heel cup, the sandal cover. And so it was interesting. interesting. I didn't try it on, so maybe it looks fine. But I imagine it would turn heads if you're wearing it. Um, Where else did we stop? Barnes and Noble, obviously. We didn't buy any books. Funny story comes out. It's going to be out by the time this episode's out. Yeah, which is exciting. I am planning if I can get myself to hold off, which like, I think I can, um, and we can do our book updates in a little bit, but I'm planning on getting to that as soon as I can after I finish the book I'm reading and then one other book, and then I can get to Funny Story. Um, what else were you doing Saturday? Um, while we were doing our outing, I kind of preemptively was texting some family, and I was like, does anyone want to um, get dinner? So we did do dinner. We also cleaned out our storage room. Oh Which, my god! Yeah, that was that needed. was so needed. With having done our whole basement, uh, not to say it was very well organized before, but like it really got just like all up in sorts with our basement renovation. And like, makeover. we honestly have such a nice, it huge is storage room, incredible. And so, like, we just weren't utilizing it. It, it arguably still shelves. could be utilized better. It has like a bunch of built-in shelves. It has like a little workbench. Like, it's got good like some lights in there. There's a light above the workbench um but like without having organized it well things were like just we kind of just like put everything on the there, floor and a bunch of stuff was on the floor like when it was on the shelves 
So yesterday, our dad helped and took out the last bit of trash that we had. Like we had some broken up um, trim that we threw in there when we like first started the basement makeover because we hadn't thrown that away yet. So he came and like took that so he could put it in the dumpster. We had some other trash in there that just needed to be cleaned out. And then Sierra and I organized everything, which was like so it's just really nice and spacious down there now. And things are organized. We know where stuff is at. The um, tool bench is organized. Got some stuff hanging up because there's like a, I don't want to say pegboard. I guess it is though. There's like things that you can organize like hanging up on the wall that I was like, oh, this has a hook. This has a hook. Let <laughs> put me put the it command here. hooks up here, the tape up here, whatever else. Um, also, our smoke alarm, smoke detector, is that the same thing? Uh, its battery was low and so it was beeping last night it was or yesterday such weird intervals though. well yeah because during the day it was like i swear once every like 10 minutes or something like sometimes less i swear and then i'm like okay ideally i would have gotten a battery yesterday but I then i just kind of forgot because like it was going off so and so i was like okay like hopefully if it's like not going off that frequently like i can fall asleep but i'm usually a pretty heavy sleeper unless i hear vegas and then he wakes me up but like generally i can sleep pretty well and i didn't like wake up i think because of the alarm but it's just going off no, Way more I, frequently. You, you fell asleep before I did, I did, and I, um, I don't know what I was doing. I think I was just distracted and trying to read my book, and uh, like at that point, for some reason, right when I'm trying to fall asleep, it's going off like every like 10, 20, 30 seconds. So I was like, this is quite annoying now, and I haven't been using my earplugs that I had been using before because Vegas has been doing better with his sleeping, thank God. Um, but I put them in last night before bed because I was like. I can't do this. And that actually did help. I was able to fall asleep pretty easily. Except, however, <laughs> Megan, usually during the weekend, what we do is um, Megan will do like night duty and then she gets to sleep in like however late really she wants to, usually like between eight and nine. And then I'll get up with I Megan. I thought I would six. be able to hear him. And so then <laughs> I was like, surely he'll be loud enough. So I like wake up because I could hear Vegas. It's like 5 a.m. or something. I'm kind of just, like, waiting to see, like, or hear <laughs> Megan, like, get up and, like, go take care of him. And then it's, it'd been, like, long enough where I was, like, I'm being a bad mom by just, like, waiting <laughs> for Megan to hear him. So then I got up, I took him outside, he peed and he pooped, and then came back inside, and I put him back in his crate. And I think he was fine. He's been doing a lot better. I think we fixed him. <laughs> we talked about, we were having issues when we got back from vacation, uh, I guess he's gotten off. used to a new schedule and we were kind of trying to like initially we had like gotten lax and said okay maybe we can like have him come upstairs or like sleep on the couch and we're like no back to the old schedule back in your crate and he's been a lot calmer better I think putting initially I think and I think those treats have helped yes otherwise the timing was just I will okay. say um somehow I, we, one of us forgot to put any toys in his crate last night and so I came down in his uh the floor or whatever his crate is out so he so, must like the toys in there so i think the toys like either keep him distracted enough or he would choose on that instead of the crate or like i don't know but like i think the toys need to be in there to prevent that from happening because he was like extra just like whining and i was like that's also why i went downstairs because i was like he's being annoying right now and then i looked at my camera and i was like why is the crate bottom out <laughs> he's laying down on the wire <laughs> when i came downstairs uh, um not become so anyway i fixed that I need to run a pet smart today, today, by the way. I was thinking we could do that after we work out. I'm just planning my day in the middle of our podcast. But I just need to get things that Hy-Vee did not have. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of those being a Kong. Because he started destroying his Kong. One thing about him is he will... He is a destroyer. Yeah. Sierra's bought him like four different beds so he doesn't have to lay on the hard crate bottom. He destroys them all. Because like, then he just starts eating the stuffing. We can't have that. So, so he gets nothing. He does it to himself um anyways what were we on basically i had to get up at both 5 a.m and then i got up at 6 and it was fine i've been falling asleep early enough i think that like my sleep schedule i think has shifted to like being his, okay his you know what i mean schedule. like i've been going to bed before 10 a.m like pretty 10 regularly 10 p.m <clears throat> uh and then like when i get up at 6 i've usually been feeling like fine like i've usually i've used to have to take naps like in the morning because like i was like so exhausted but now I'm like up, you know, take him on his walk, do the thing. And like, I'm fine. So that's good. We went on a two mile walk this morning. And you were ready to go grocery shopping at like 7 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, let's go. Let's get this day started. Um, anyways, so we went to Texas Roadhouse. I think that's where we left off yeah. <laughs> with our story. I don't know how we, I don't know where we're jumping around. Um, we finished organizing the basement. 
we said that now then it was texas roadhouse time um so it was me megan Haley, our mom our grandma we invited maggie but maggie had other plans going on um i got something new that i hadn't gotten before i got the herb chicken or something with mashed potatoes and corn when megan was ordering <laughs> she got a little flustered because she ordered the chicken i was only expecting to have to order one side i didn't look at the fine print where it was like you get two sides and i must usually do like two orders of fries then or something because i don't know but i like felt like that was like gonna be like a lot of fries so i was like um she was like panicking i'm like panicking i'm looking at like the sides to be honest i don't like a lot of sides like there's like the option of like coleslaw vegetables on the side applesauce i like but that's kind of weird with the meals so. i was waiting for you to say that so i was like uh i'll do a baked potato because it that i like baked potatoes and then like i just thought it was funny everyone was like because she did fries and baked potatoes two. which is like two potatoes it just seemed like a lot of potato and so, so like, okay never mind um <laughs> change your mind i'll do and then i got a side of corn you know there's a lot of potato options so like you know fries baked potato mashed potatoes yeah um my chicken i was kind of in about i feel like they didn't cook it all the way through mm. and so i was like i'm Ew. not taking a box home <laughs> like i had my i, had I think i'll try what Haley got next time it was like shrimp on a bit of rice <laughs> shrimp can't be on a wednesday night is that you're thinking of <laughs> yes this is an inside joke that literally no one none of you guys will understand because my cousin posted on facebook literally forever ago it was just a picture of him. He had made shrimp scampi. <laughs> <laughs> All he did was post a picture of it and said, shrimp scampi on Wednesday night <laughs> to me. <laughs> it was just the funniest thing ever. And so now I, I will reference it with Megan every once in a I while. I should add that to my references list. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, and so I ate all of my mashed potatoes and my corn, but then I had like a a couple bites of my chicken. I was like, I just feel like I'm having to like gnaw on it a little bit. <laughs> and I feel like it's just not, I don't know. It's a little pink. Yeah. I can cook my chicken better than that. I so. don't like chicken breasts for that reason. I feel like they're never cooked well. You need small little tenders or bites. Mm-hmm. Um, then we came home, hung out. We're both kind of slacking our, on our reading, but we can get I keep being so tired at night. And we're not really reading during the day. Shame on us. Yeah. Um, okay. I am still reading f- The Friend Zone. Was I reading that last week? I don't know. It's by Abby Jimenez. It's in the Friend Zone series. Is that what it's called? I don't know. I have There's, no idea. She only has like two different universes that her books are set in. But they're all like separate standalone books basically. And I am enjoying it. But like I'm not actively like rushing to like oh, I need to finish this book. I need to read it. I'm like obsessed with the characters. Um, I definitely don't think it's going to be like one of my top books of hers. It's probably going to be like second to last because like there is one of her books that I've read that I kind of actively was disappointed by. Um, That was the Happy Ever After playlist. And I think this one's better than that. Um, But I'm hoping to finish it within the next, you know, day or two. And then I'm going to read The Serpent and the Wings of Night. And then... I'm going to try and do a funny story. I am reading Scythe, which is our book club book. And I'm enjoying it, but like, I'm not like dying to Last week, I think I talked about how like, I felt like it could be so much more, Mm -hmm. but it was a male author. And like, I just feel like if it was a female author, she really could have tapped into some good stuff (laughs) in that book. Um, So I feel like, I also like just don't, I do kind of know where it's going now, I guess since we just had like their whole meeting and like now I understand like what the stakes are initially I didn't really feel like there are any stakes so maybe like once I just get back into it again I've been trying to read at night but I've just been so tired that like I literally read like seven pages one night and then I was like I'm falling asleep I don't know what's going on so then I just had to call it quits and then last night I was too tired to even like start reading so I didn't read anything so yeah I what are you to, reading what's your next couple books well I do have my reading order initially it was supposed to be assassin's blade but i feel like i want to like make sure i'm in the mood for it and i don't know if i'm going to be in the mood for it after i finish scythe so i don't know what are some of your like i don't know if i would say fluffy books but like you have your potential reading order list what's the next book that could be like a cleanser let me see 
just for the summer would that be a good cleanser that'd be, that would be good it's not i don't think it's really like that emotionally like overwhelming i think it'd be good otherwise i have the fine print and things we never got over but those are both like, long books yeah so like they're not really like a cleanser i still feel like you need like intention going into those books yeah so i don't know that's where i'm at right now otherwise i could always go on my kindle and like get either like another like the next naturals book yeah um yeah this probably wouldn't be a cleanser but i have on my on my radar that i want to read another stephen king book at some point Maybe the Green Mile. I've heard good things about that. That's where I'm at right now. I really, I'm trying to get to read like average five books a month. And so I think I've read three. I think I should be able to finish five. How many have I read this month? I want to say probably three. I have read three. I read Iron Flame, Just for the Summer Scythe. And then if I can get done with Friend Zone and The Serpent in the Wings of Night, maybe even Funny Story could get in there too. That's, you know, you kind of lofty. You 10 days I know. to do that. It is kind of lofty. So hopefully at least I can get to the five. It's just like I had such a good March reading month and we had vacations so like that obviously helped. But I was like one book after another and like yeah. I just feel like I was not getting in a reading slump. Like I was just reading. So I need to get back into it. Anyway. Uh, that was our book update. Are we on to... I did want to talk about... I made, like, you know, a little list of things that I wanted to discuss today. Um, first of all, this is me going back to movie night, but, like, we need to talk about Bullet Train for a second. So, Meg and I, we had offered two movie options, both of which we had seen. Because I feel like it... I didn't want us like, have everyone come over for a movie, and then, like, the movie sucked. Mm-hmm. And so, we tried to pick movies that we thought that we had at least enjoyed, so... So the options were Bullet Train and Iron Claw, and we went and saw Iron Claw with our dad, and so, like, we just decided, okay, maybe we go with the movie that you guys have not seen, but we have, you know, vetted and we can say it's good. So that's what we went with. We also, like, did watch both trailers, and, like, everyone kind of, I think, collectively agreed they would rather watch Bullet Train, at least that night. Um, and it was funny, like, Megan went to go, like, look at, like, renting or buying it, and so she, like, hit the rent button, but, like, at the same time, you could, like, see what it would cost to buy it and it's only like what 50 50 cents cents more more. so it's like as you hit like rent ashton was like it's only 50 and mine's like i'm already going back (laughs) she's like we're buying it (laughs) so we bought bullet train so now we can watch it whenever we want um so that was our second time watching it and i could listen to forgive me for not tangerine (laughs) uh i don't know the actor that plays uh lemon i don't know his name but Aaron, tangerine, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> Aaron Tangerine. Um, I could listen to them speak in that accent all day long. Like, yeah. it was like every time they were on screen, like talking, I just loved it. Um, I also just, again, I've already seen the movie, so I enjoyed it. I do it feel. It is definitely like more graphic, which usually Sierra and I do not like in a movie, but I feel like it's, it's still manageable. Like it's, it's mostly in the beginning and like there's like flashback scenes. That tends to be, like, the most graphic Who directs stuff. that movie? I do not know. Um, but, like, Haley was saying, Haley and Ashton have watched The Boys on Amazon, and they had recommended, I don't know if it was specifically to me or to both of us, that I watch it. And so I did try to watch it, and I didn't really like the, the plot was like, eh, but it was so gory for me unnecessarily that I was like, I can't do this. Like, I just will not be watching this. So I gave up on that show. And I think ever since I told Haley that and, like, the reason, like, I gave up was because of the goriness. Then we were watching this and she was like, and you like this movie? And I was like, The Boys was just too much. Um. Anyways, we watched that. I'd recommend the movie. But, like, if you watch the trailer and you're like, I don't think I'd like this, then, like, you're probably not going to like it. So. Mm-hmm. Don't waste your time if... I do think there was one point in the movie where we were, like, all getting distracted from, like, how cute Henry and Vegas were being. And so I think that Ashton, Haley, maybe our dad, like, didn't see some of the stuff in the movie, which, so, like, like, there's, there's things that of, connect. There's a lot of different people in the movie that, like, are involved with the situation for different reasons. And if you aren't paying attention, you're going to miss them. So I think that's part of what happened. So at the end, I think people were, like... They liked it, but they were also, like, confused, kind of confused on the plot a little bit. And, like, I know that when we watched it, we were paying attention. Like, I know that I wasn't confused by the end. Like, I kind of saw how everything was connected. So, I was like, they probably missed a few things. 
mm-hmm. which is fine. But I thought it was a good movie night movie. Uh, we saw there's someone that commented on our vlog. And they're like, "You guys should watch The Iron Claw," and I'm like, Luckily, I "It is have. arguably probably like the better movie." I loved. I like both movies. Um, <clears throat> but we're saving The Iron Claw maybe for a second movie night, or maybe we'll do something else. I don't know. We've yet to decide, but we'll show everyone. Okay, let's talk about the tortured. Excuse me, <laughs> the tortured post department. <laughs> Um, before we do, I kind of feel like it'd be fun to talk about if you're not a Swifty, maybe you'll enjoy us talking about this anyways. Feel free to keep listening. If things regarding Taylor Swift just annoy you, then like maybe now's a good time to head out. I don't know if we'll be covering much else. Um, but I thought it'd be fun to talk about, well, we can talk about our New York trip at the end. Okay. So stay tuned. We'll have something stay else. Tuned. Welcome to New York. <laughs> well, um, Okay. I want to talk about how we've kind of grown into becoming, you know, I could say, I would say we could proclaim ourselves as Swifties. I, here's what I would say. I don't like claim the title as like, I feel so strongly about like being a huge Taylor Swift fan. Like I don't even follow her on Instagram. I don't either, but I don't follow anyone. Like I follow celebrity wise. I don't follow them. I don't follow Benson Boone. I like every time I have previously followed an artist, I get annoyed enough of seeing their stuff that I unfollow them. I do mute their stories. Every celebrity, you got to mute their stories. Always- I used to follow Olivia Rodrigo. I don't anymore. I used to follow Ariana Grande. I don't anymore. Like, I just am like, I always get tired of seeing what they post. So I opt out. Anyway, um, what was I saying about that? You don't necessarily proclaim. Oh, but like, I wouldn't say like, oh, I'm not a Swifty in yeah. the sense that like, I feel like I'm, I'm like too deep into it, the you know? lore of like the things that I know that like an average viewer, like, like if someone called me a Swifty, I'd be like, okay, sure. Like if you see me as that, but like, I wouldn't be like, I am a Swifty. Because I feel like the other Swifties would be like, no, you're not. Yeah. Okay. So prior, like, you know, Fearless, obviously, when it came out, was a very popular album. And I remember growing up, our mom would play that, like, in the car a lot. And, like, I, I have, like, distinct memories a lot of, mom, of those songs. Like, buying and playing Red. To me, like, that was the album that she, like, I have had. memories of Fearless when we lived in her old house and then Red when we moved. Which makes sense. <laughs> Chronologically. Anyways, nice. so, like... Obviously, Taylor Swift has always been popular. And so, like, our mom, you know, back when you had to buy CDs instead of listening on the radio all the time, like, she or streaming. She was, you know, playing her songs plenty. So I knew and have liked Taylor Swift songs. Um, before streaming, also, like, I wasn't going and picking songs to choose from. And so any of her songs that were popular on the radio, like, I generally knew and liked them. So I've always, you know, I've always liked Taylor Swift. I've never disliked her or her music, but I have definitely been indifferent as well. And so then I would say come, you know, the Taylor's version re-releases, I was kind of getting confused as to why she was releasing her albums again. So then I started figuring out the lore related to that. And when she was going and releasing... You know, know it's interesting because... When we were talking about this yesterday. Did we figure out Evermore and Folklore? Was that were those released before? Yes, before any of the Taylor's before versions. any of the Taylor's version. And it's I like, was an absent fan. Yeah. During so the I'm like, albums. okay, I for sure wasn't keeping updated on stuff then because like Folklore and Evermore came out and I had no idea, no clue. Well, like I knew they came out, but like I did not listen to a single song. Um. So then, Red Taylor's version was the first one that I thought, she re released. Fearless was the first one. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yes. We corrected this yesterday. And for that, I, I knew it was being released, but like, I don't even know if I knew the exact day. I just knew that it was happening and it was kind of a big deal in pop culture just because it was like the first re-release and didn't really hang around to like listen to the re-release because I was like, I don't really care. I like went and listened to a few of the Vault songs because I'm a Jonas Brothers stan. I listened to uh, the one that's about Joe, which like, what is it even called right now? I, oh, Mr. Perfectly Fine, which mm-hmm. is still a bop. I love that song. And that's so, like all i got out of that one yeah then comes red taylor's version and i'm hearing all the lore of the 10 minute version of all too well which keep in mind before this i didn't even know all too well like the regular version okay so i was like not i was not in it i was not invested and but i was intrigued by dylan o'brien sadie sink <laughs> being in this directed 10 minute version music video so I was in it enough at that time to say, I'm going to watch the premiere of this. And so I did. I enjoyed it. I liked it. 
the all too well tenement version is arguably like taylor's masterpiece of a song her uh, perfection. what did she say like their magnum opus or something yes. um like that's just an amazing song so the rest of the red album though i didn't i don't really remember like really listening to any of the new stuff so i still like was kind of just like picking and choosing what i wanted to consume then after that was the midnight's album release and at that time i had grown familiar enough just like with taylor swift and pop culture and like knowing and seeing that this album was coming out and being released and having slowly i feel like just been getting more and more involved with the different releases she was having this was going to be all brand new stuff so i was intrigued and so the next day after it had been released i was like okay i'm going to listen to this on my drive into my clinical and like that was the first time i really decided like i'm going to consume this brand new album like beginning to end and just like take it all in because i before that there's very few artists i would like listen to a full album of because i just haven't grown into that kind of person yet i guess i don't know um and i remember feeling like how a lot of people do after I feel like you get into Taylor Swift and you're not really sure what to expect. And this goes for any album release too. Like you listen the first time through and you're kind of like... Except for Benson Boone's album. Except for Fireworks and (laughs) Rollerblades. That one was a bop from the beginning. But you listen through and you're kind of like, all these kind of sound the same and I'm not really sure it's hitting how I was wanting it to hit. And so I kind of was like not disappointed, but I also was like not really sure how I felt about it. Um, But I feel like the more you listen to her albums, the more you realize that, like, she really knew what she was doing all along. (laughs) Because I have actually really grown to, like, most of the songs on Midnight's. I wouldn't say it's an album I was listening to on repeat all the time, but I found the songs that I liked and would incorporate them. I feel like, for me, at this time, like, I listened to Midnight's probably, like, you know, one or two times through, and then I was like, I'm going back to my old stuff. And then, like, now I just know, like, the popular Midnight songs, Mm -hmm. and, like, that's about it for me. And then she's obviously had her different releases, like Taylor's version releases. She did Speak Now, which I've never been a Speak Now girly, and I am still not a Speak Now girly. So, like, that one's pretty underwhelming for me. And I honestly, like, I listened to the, what's the popular song? um, Until, I don't know if that's what it is, actually. No, it's the one that, like, was like Daisy Jones and the Six Vibes. Oh, I can see you. Yeah. That one. I I did like that one. I kind of found, like, the, the gemstone of the album and i was like okay you're going on my on repeat and then 1989 came out and when i first heard the vault tracks on that i honestly was kind of like i don't know how i feel about them and then like as with as happens with all of her songs <laughs> as time continued i was like i like all of these except for the one i never was listening to is i can't even remember the name of it because i don't know it because all the other ones i was listening to like regularly hold on one second for 1989, I feel like the one that I listened to the most, I mean, it's like the one everyone listens to the most. Um, where is it? it? Oh, is it over now? Is the main one that I listen to. But there's also Slut, Say Don't Go, Now That We Don't Talk, Suburban Legends. Suburban Legends. I was like, I've never yeah. heard of that song before in my that life. That one, I'm like, I don't listen to that one at all. But the other is like, and at this point, I would say I was actively now going back and listening to, especially having like then watched the Eras tour at some point in all of this and like gotten a broader look at like her discography and folklore and evermore, which I hadn't really ever heard before. I was going back now and like basically on Spotify, I was like only listening to Taylor Swift songs and I was like trying to go through folklore and a little bit of Evermore to like get more familiar with them because I was starting to like those as well. So at this point, I was like, okay, I would say I'm actively consuming and listening to like a lot of her music. And then we have the Tortured Poets Department is going to be coming out. So I was like, and you have to also realize like the Travis Kelsey of it all, you yes. know, on top of her music. <laughs> this was also, you know, with a very public relationship for them, I would say, although it still is pretty private, but like, you know, all of America now is the world even just like wanting to root for them and cheer for them. And so that feeds into it as well. Yeah. I am not immune. I'm also <laughs> obsessed with them. Um, so the Tortured Poets Department comes out. I started listening to it when it came out on release night and then I continued, you know, through the next day. 
because I was getting tired and I was falling asleep. And I will say I've heard a lot of different repeat reviews and opinions of the album and I can agree with what a lot of people are saying but I've also now that it's been a couple days I will say like even my own opinions are changing on what I originally thought and like the songs are just sounding better and better every day and the more and like you're able to differentiate them more this is the nature of literally every album release ever you hear songs that you don't know they all sound the same you don't know the words and And you're like I don't know how I feel about this and then you get more familiar, like you start to like recognize the beat. And you're kind of like, oh, this doesn't sound like what it <clears throat> did sound like the first time I listened. So, because um, like most people, I do think this album is very lyric heavy. And sometimes you're kind of like, I don't Where know. Where are we going? This, the wording is making sense with the music or like this is very wordy. And, you know, it's not meant to be like a pop album i understand that i saw a tiktok that i thought was so funny where it was someone saying like 1989 who are like those are like the pop girlies yeah like leaving when they hear the tortured post department and then like i think they once used upon a broken once heart. upon a broken heart like they start playing that and they're like turning around like wait okay i'm back like i'm coming <laughs> um so i agree with the reviews of you know i get the general consensus of like i do think initially it sounds a lot of the same and sometimes there are some different lyrics where you're like that's an interesting choice of words or like we could have maybe done without this but overall like there are 31 freaking songs to choose from there are definitely good songs in the bunch and i'm pleased and i've kind of found some ones that i am leaning more towards and then Mm -hmm. there's probably the ones that i am not going to listen to a whole lot and so when we like went to bed i was like okay like when i wake up something else will have happened because i knew like you know we all knew something was going on we didn't know what it would be I was kind of airing the sign of like I kind of just thought uh, it was be from a the vault kind of deluxe. thing. Yeah, like what she do with midnight's where it's yeah. like oh like more songs, and there were more songs. But oh my god, whole... when I like went to Spotify and I was like oh like what's the new thing, and then I was like, hello, like and I was like this is a legit sixteen or fifteen more songs. Oh my god, yeah. Um, so should we go through and say, you know, our our top songs like in no particular order, but just the ones that sure. like stick out and we've been listening to a little bit more often here so Fortnite's obviously like the lead single for this album it's growing on me it is i do I think agree. there's not a lot of post in it which doesn't really bother me like i'm not a huge post malone fan so but usually like if you're doing people, like a featuring an artist yeah. you're expecting people are saying he got the lana del rey <laughs> treatment yeah. for this one but like i do enjoy the song i like it and i think it's catchy and her posting like that one youtube short i guess technically like that she's like for a Fortnite yeah. challenge oh or God. whatever i'm like i feel like that honestly like did something like it shifted my brain chemistry for that song where i was like this is like a catchy like it's not a pop song but like it is it could be a pop song you know what i mean like it kind of makes more sense as a a lead single now yeah so i'm liking that one i still don't really know like all the words to that one like it's not it's not there's not not that many words but i'm like probably gonna start listening to it more um i honestly haven't really listened to the tortured poets department much um i don't have super strong thoughts on that i'm getting with all these songs i'm trying to just like listen to them more and more so like i'm getting more familiar with all of them um my boy only breaks his favorite toys i do like i do like that one quite a bit it's catchy it's fun um down bad i like so long london is kind of growing on me a little bit the more i learn the words but daddy i love him is also kind of becoming like more of a top one for me the more i've made the connection i haven't listened to it as much as you the more i've made the connection first of all like the lyrics in the chorus are just funny with like people reacting to um i'm having his baby no i'm not but look at your faces like that's just very fun to me and then it's reminding me a lot of like a more mature version of love story so now that in my head i've like made that connection i love love story and so in my mind i'm like oh this is love story point two point oh point two <laughs> point two um fresh out the slammer is also good megan i have florida i literally am like mixed opinion like everyone seems to be loving florida and megan are like i don't, I don't know about i honestly that one. like i'm skipping that one if i'm honest so um, for now that's our thought on that one who's afraid of little old me is also one of my top ones i love the witchy nature of it i love the screaming or you know different voice she uses for that and i think it's catchy i can do it with a broken heart it's kind of the one of the fun like it's very sad lyrics, i love but then, like like very i love when i get to the song. chorus and like i just think i can like scream that like mm-hmm. i love the dichotomy of like the you know this is hard but i'm doing this anyways like i just think it's fun um i don't really i feel like i've listened to lommel that much no. 
the alchemy i gotta say like i do agree with people giving it comparisons to like the ai travi made it to the big game it does kind of have that energy mm-hmm. so it's like not the best song but it's not the worst song either i definitely because it has to be with travis kelsey i've definitely listened to it and given it more of a chance travis kelsey definitely had to look up alchemy <laughs> like when she showed him the song i need to look it up probably he was like oh that's awesome babe what does that mean the Black Dog is also one of my top ones. Um, the Albatross is good. I like the Albatross, good. too. It's good. How did it end? I don't know as much, but I know I like it enough that like I've been trying to add it more on. So I'm so High School more. is my favorite right now. Like I know most of the words, I would say. And it's about Travis Kelsey, so like I love that. And I just think like it's a fun... Like The music's more upbeat for that one. And I, I just love like, the little like, reminiscent vibes. That's probably it for kind of like at least ones I have enough of an opinion on. I'm liking the bolter, but I feel like I need to like really keep going. Like there's 31 songs, guys. It's only been like yeah. four days. Give me some grace. So those are our thoughts. That's our Taylor Swift journey. Um, yeah. Now we can talk about our New York trip. Yes. So um, it's going to be a three-day trip Saturday through Monday. Our dad is coming with us. And the reason that we booked this trip was because we have all three been to New York. Not, I mean, Meg and I went together, but our dad has gone for work. And then Meg and I technically went for work because it was like NBC had invited us and Maggie. We were there for like literally 24 hours. Got to tour some of like the NBC studios and like Rockefeller Center and that. But like that was literally it. Like we got in at like 6 a.m., went got ready went straight to the studio like we're done around 8 or 9 p.m went to Times square and then like, we were all the so exhausted because of the traveling the travel day we had to get there and then our flight was like super early the next morning so that was it um we didn't really, so we didn't get, really to get to new york a lot of our day was honestly spent like inside the buildings we were in too. yes so it was like i literally felt like i wasn't there so um because megan loves travel and she loves just looking at flight and prices. i've got credit card points now <laughs> yeah um so megan had suggested new york and i think like new york in the summer would be a good time so if there's a time to go visit you know so we had you know found flight prices that looked okay They're megan was able to get better uh the hotel i mean free for her my dad and i are still paying megan yeah. back for our share of the room um so Megan's like profiting off of this trip. I, know. I was like, because of my credit card points that I had and it's basically making it so like I had to pay Sierra a hundred dollars for her. Like we canceled each other out a little bit, but I still owed her a hundred dollars for my um, flight. And then my dad still owes me like some money back for the hotel really? share. So that, like, like she making, didn't even pay for it. It's her card paying for it, but like we're still splitting it. So Megan's making money on this trip basically until we get there. And I actually like spend money. Um, Funny enough, because we were like kind of like, what do we do for the trip? Like, obviously, we have an idea of like stuff that we want to do, but we have to organize some sort of itinerary. And I was like, just for funsies, like, let me like throw this into chat GPT. And like, low key, it, I think it gave us out a pretty like good. a pretty decent itinerary. Because I like had specified, I said that weird. I had specified, like, give me an itinerary for like a three day trip in New York. I'll be with my sister and my dad. And we get there Friday evening and like we're leaving Monday evening or something and like i just feel like a lot of itineraries like don't take in my don't take into account because like why would they if you say like a three-day trip like we don't get there until like afternoon evening time like three o'clock on or something. saturday and so like we don't have a full day and then like we have to be back at the airport like mid-afternoon probably on monday and so i saw like it laid things out very nicely it's like talking about a broadway show on friday like we're probably like realistically gonna get there kind of freshen up go to dinner maybe see a show show. and like yeah that's kind of it and then day two i think it had given it had like specific locations that i don't remember off the top of my head but like had given some shopping recommendations some like areas to try out for food um and i'm like giving like neighborhood recommendations yeah and day three was like more specifically something like okay this is like your central park and like museum day of like Mm -hmm. you know walking around in wherever that is at i think you too had mentioned something about nyu and like there's a washington park. square park. yes i was like there's a park specifically by nyu that I had recommended so if generally, you guys have any recommendations for 
New York things we need like need to see or try. I don't think we're going to do like a lot of the touristy stuff. I would like to see the like World Trade Center yeah. Memorial. Uh, and but, like, like we're not going to the Statue of Liberty. Maybe we'll see it, but like we're not going there. <laughs> or like I don't really care to like go to like the top of the Empire State Building. I don't know. I'll have to see what like you or you like and Dad what? think for or like how like the all different do. tickets and you know things like that. If there is, then like I'd be less wanting to do that. So, and I've also heard people say like, uh, like instead of doing the Empire State Building, like going to the top, like if you go to the top of the Rock, yeah, that's like just as good of a view, and it's usually not as busy. I don't know if it's free or if it's just like less expensive than. I think you need tickets. I feel like with most stuff like that, you need tickets. So, that is our initial thoughts and plans. Um, that'll about do it for this episode. So, yeah. hopefully you enjoyed yapping with us. We were yapping. You were listening. Um, you guys are great listeners. I think we're going to try and do an advice episode next week if you remember to post something. So be on the lookout for that to send stuff in. And we will talk to you guys next Thursday. Bye.